Hello again, beautiful artists. Welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. I missed you guys last week. Uh, my phone broke and I wasn't able to record a video and it also just seemed like a time to unplug and join the worldwide movement uh, that is going on right now. Uh, I wanted to also create a painting that I felt like was a little bit more appropriate uh, for the energy of the country and world. Uh, so I'm hoping that this will kind of help us transmute uh, all of our energy and our righteous rage that we're feeling as a country so that we can come together, unify in solidarity, uh, and truly see the truth that is being displayed right now. It's also a full moon tonight, so I thought I'd do a full moon painting for us. Uh, okay, let's jump right in. So the colors that I have, uh, I have a black canvas that I'm starting with, first of all. So you can just paint your canvas black, <clears throat> or you can also get a black canvas, either way. Uh, the colors that I'm going to start with for the background is just white phalo green, which is that beautiful um, turquoise color, ultramarine blue, and violet. I have my three standard brushes that I'm using, and I'm also going to be using my old toothbrush uh, to create some splatter painting. So check the description box below for a more detailed list on all the materials that you'll need. I'm gonna get those brushes in my water cup. And the first brush that we're gonna start with today is our big brush. We're gonna start with purple. And you're gonna add just a tiny pinch of white, trying to keep that white somewhat clean. And we're gonna go right across the top part of our canvas here. We're gonna create a gradation. So this looks really beautiful on the black canvas. Very pretty to see the dark night sky underneath. Totally different effect than painting on a white canvas for sure. Okay, you wanna go just a nice big stripe working your way down. That's gonna be the top part of our beautiful night sky. Now let's grab a little bit of blue and we're gonna start blending those two beautiful colors together. like so. A little bit of water, as always, makes the paint go nice and smooth. Back and forth brush strokes coming up into the purple and blending them together. Looking good. Okay, just a little bit more blue right underneath. So we're doing a three color gradation today, going from purple to blue to a beautiful teal green. Okay, so that is our night sky. And then I like to add a little bit of teal. Let's rinse our brush. Still that same big brush. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that phalo and add just a pinch of white to get that teal green. This color is very much like uh, the sort of glow that you get with Northern Lights. So this is sort of inspired by maybe Canada or Alaska or somewhere like that, uh, when you get this gorgeous green glow on the horizon. I was lucky enough to travel to Alaska a few years ago and see the Northern Lights. And it was one of the best experiences of my life. I highly recommend it. If you can, at some point in your life, put it on your bucket list. You will not be disappointed. Particularly if you are a fan of nature and colors, I've never seen anything quite so spectacular. I went to Fairbanks, Alaska. Really, really amazing. Okay, that looks gorgeous. Now, we're going to create a reflection. So the whole idea of this painting is as above, so below. So we're creating a reflection of our little world underneath. So we're actually just going to kind of repeat that same gradation. So we went purple, blue, green. Now we're going to go green, blue, purple. And right in that green is where we're going to end up putting our horizon line. If you're new here, welcome. I do post new videos every week. So make sure and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to paint along with us. 
I also want to mention that we have a art club uh, Facebook group that's designed to be an art share so that you guys can share your paintings if you're painting along. So check that out also in the description box below. I want to make sure to remember to mention that. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Uh, you also get access to bonus videos that are a little bit more in the intermediate painting level and also access to a monthly live Q&A with yours truly. Okay, I'm going to now blend it into blue. If your colors are getting too muddy, make sure and just rinse your brush. This is, these are analogous colors, so colors that are close by uh, to each other on the color wheel. So we don't need to worry about it mixing to really ugly colors, like, you know, kind of like a yellow brown that happens a lot when you mix across the color wheel. Not always the prettiest. Uh, today we're just doing vibrant colors that are next door to each other so we can just go ahead and blend them right together and not necessarily worrying about keeping our brush quite so clean and don't be shy so actually bring it up into that area and back down you don't want stripes of color you actually want to start blending i know blending is tricky and creating special course on blending and color mixing right now as we speak and actually the first 50 patrons uh, are going to get access to that class as well for free so that's going to be usually for sale for about $40 uh, patreon is a suggested $4 donation each month so again check that out if that sounds like something you're interested in all right and then we're just going to blend our way to purple here like so very pretty gradation that we have created back and forth all the way off the side of the canvas ah, just a little bit more purple up top i don't want to get too dark okay that looks good. Now let's add just a little bit of splatter painted stars and then we're going to let this dry and come back for the second part. So go ahead and grab maybe your medium brush. <clears throat> Whatever brush that you have that's somewhat clean still. And you're just going to make a nice little batch of watered down white for yourself. Mix it up with the brush. Then you're going to use your toothbrush. And we're just going to dip that in our little white mix and we're going to add some splatter painted stars so don't be afraid to get messy that's part of the fun of it and again so as above so below so we're creating a reflection here um, so if you go like diagonal like this you may want to go then diagonal like that I like to use the toothbrush because it gives me all sorts of different size splatters and the really tiny like micro splatters that I think really translates well to night skies. All those amazing stars. That's the other thing about my trip to Alaska is even without the lights, the lack of residual lighting from any city nearby because we were so remote also just creates like the most absolutely spectacular night sky you've ever seen uh, and just different color stars and a really clear view of the Milky Way. So it's kind of already amazing and, and worth it. The uh, northern lights can be sort of elusive. I had to track them down and go at the right season. Okay, that looks great. Let's go ahead and let this dry for a few minutes and then we'll come back and we'll add all the other fantastic uh, different parts and elements of our landscape painting. Okay, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. 
Welcome back artists. I have a dry canvas. I washed and rinsed my brushes and got fresh water. I have my same colors that I'm still going to use. I replenished my blue and my purple because uh, I would need some more of that when we're going to get uh, involved in all these new steps. I also put on my uh, palette here yellow and black. So believe it or not, we're actually going to mix up a forest green using yellow. Um, so we're going to be using green, but uh, a yellow here mixed with black makes a really cool olive green that we're going to use as well. So again, clean brushes. And I'm going to use my medium brush now. And the first thing that we're going to do uh, is going to be to create our horizon line and our purple mountains. So go ahead and mix up a light purple. You don't want to go too light. It's kind of a medium lightish purple with a little bit of white. And we are going to try to create as straight of a line as we can across our canvas, uh, starting from the center. You're going to start right in the middle of your canvas and go right across. And then we're going to create three little peaks. One, kind of wiggling my brush, two, three. However, however many you end up with is also fine. Um, but I like to do three because I feel like the odd number just looks a little bit better. And then we're going to go ahead and fill it in with our medium size brush. And while you're filling it in, you can kind of Try to get as straight of a line as you can going across and a nice clean line coming up into your beautiful sky. There we go. I'm just getting a little bit of that glowing green over the horizon still. Nice straight horizon line. Very pretty. Now you don't want to go all the way across because you want to have this nice little peekaboo part in the center. That's where we're going to put our moon as well. Kind of just laying it out deliberately, although certainly look good. However, which way you end up getting it laid out. Okay, that's looking good. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of white. This is just the watered down white that I had from before. It's totally fine to use. Uh, and I'm going to create some beautiful moon like shine on these mountains, moon like highlights from the moonlight. And I'm going to do just kind of wiggle my way down here, just do a bunch of little wiggly brush strokes. And the same thing right next door. It's important to know which mountain is in front of which mountain. Which mountain is which? So this guy goes in front. Got to make sure you understand your own composition. You're kind of building your own little world here. There. And since we're going to put the moon in the center, I'm going to do highlights on the left side of these mountains, but I'm going to do it on the right side of this mountain because I have a centralized light source here of the full moon. I have a segment on light and layers in my acrylic boot camp course that I am releasing very soon, hopefully this month. Might be a little bit into July. It must be perfect. But this summer, it's coming at you guys. Okay, just a little bit of highlights there. Very nice. That could be the moonshine, or it could be even a little bit of snow. Very, very pretty. Oh, just love it. Okay. Now, we're going to take everything that we just did and translate it into our water. Uh, very, 
gently. I'm just gonna kinda try to mirror and mimic what you had on the top. And just lightly pull your brush, kinda wiggle it all around, gets that cool mountainy shape. And we're just as above, so below, creating the mirror reflection. You can also flip your canvas over to do this part. And I just did a little outline, but I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna use some back and forth brush strokes. And I'm gonna fill in the majority of the underneath reflection here, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of like the peekaboo green as a reflection of the sky. You wanna keep these brush strokes horizontal back and forth here. That's what's really gonna create that reflective look that I just find so pretty and calming. And the idea of the painting today is a calm reflection, our calm subconscious mind, accessing all possibilities through peace. Little flicks of the wrist. Very nice. Getting that Arctic feel. So beautiful. Very nice. Okay, and we can actually take a little bit of that white and throw that in there as well. As above, so below. There we go. Nice little tiny horizontal brush strokes. Just a little flick of the wrist. If you went too heavy handed, just grabbing some purple, toning it down. There's never a way to make a permanent mistake with acrylic. <laughs> you can always just go over it and start new. It's one of my favorite mediums for that reason and so wonderful for beginning painters. Okay, looks great. I love it. Okay, rinse your brush. Let's paint our beautiful moon. So I'm gonna do this guy pretty much dead center, maybe like peeking uh, from behind this mountain a little bit. Again, I really want to cherish that just hint of green that's coming up over the horizon. Uh, so I'm gonna try to keep that visible. And if you have a hard time making circles, I highly recommend uh, just finding anything circular in your house, you know, a wine glass, um, you know, circular painting tape, a cup, anything that is the right size uh, for the moon that you wanna create. I'm gonna do a really big one uh, today, but you can do a small moon as well. Just kind of peeking from behind. The larger your moon is, the more detail you're going to need to put in it. And I want to make sure that it kind of, again, pokes up from the mountain, but doesn't cover all that beautiful green light. So this is a moonrise. You know, the northern lights are the most active during the hours of 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. So at the moonrise, <laughs> on a clear night, you would get this glow. And the glow means that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good night for the lights. The glow happens a lot in those northern hemispheres. Um, but it has to do with solar activity uh, as to how active the lights are. So this is kind of like a 
like a buzzing energy. Uh, it's just exquisite. I really do recommend trying to get up to the northern or southern hemispheres and experience this on your own for yourself. One day I'm going to do a full Northern Lights painting as well. Even though the Northern Lights are at their peak uh, around the solstices, uh, I think it's still kind of more like a wintery painting. So this is a little sp springtime special. So I have gray here. I'm going to go just along the left-hand side of my moon. I'm going to create a shadow. I'm going to kind of scribble my way into the center part, creating both the illusion of roundness and also craters. Okay, it's just that easy. Look at that. Okay, that looks really cute. Honestly, this is like a quick step, so don't overwork it too much. You might find that it blends a little bit more or too much all to one solid gray. So when in doubt, leave it out. Don't overwork it. And my moon is a little bit like smooshed shape, but I think I'm going to just go with it. I am, however, going to just take a little bit of purple and bring it up even further up just a tiny bit to make sure that it's just really clean where those two things meet. Okay, and then as above, so below, so we're going to go ahead and create the same moon underneath. So we want to just have it peeking. There we go. And then just like how we used horizontal brush strokes to fill in the mountains, we're going to use horizontal brush strokes here as well. So it's not the exact mirror image. It's the mirror image translated in horizontal brush strokes. The calmer your lake is, the more it would be a perfect reflection. But my lake just has a tiny bit of movement. Let's take a little bit of that gray. This is pretty dark gray. I'm just tapping in some texture there, but also then kind of pulling the brush strokes over so that I get that horizontal. There we go. I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Again, when in doubt, leave it out. That looks cute to me. Okay, and now we're actually going to kind of break this area up a little bit and make it look even more like it's a reflection with some more horizontal brush strokes. So let's go ahead and take blue. And I am going to add just, I think, a pinch of white. Boop. Just a little bit. Okay, and then just loading that blue up onto my brush. And then I'm going to come and create more horizontal lines and just make it look like that is just beautiful still water. And it's going to come through all the shapes that you just made. Now this is one of a couple colors that we're going to do this technique with, so don't overdo it. Very pretty. This could also be maybe Crater Lake here in Oregon, but it's not northern enough here to see the northern lights. It is northern enough to have the sunset at like 9 p.m. right now. <laughs> Where I was in Alaska, we were only think about 60 miles south of the Arctic Circle. The whole bottom part of your canvas here is a lake, so those horizontal brush strokes are going to go all across the bottom 
and all through your reflective objects here. Okay, we're gonna add a few brush strokes of our gorgeous green that I just love. Right where it would reflect just a little bit. The color just picking up off of the lake. Really try to keep these brush strokes horizontal. If you get a diagonal brush stroke, you're not gonna be happy. Perfect. Okay. And then the last color we'll use is black. It's that night sky reflecting into our lake. A little bit in this part. Little flick of the wrist. Oh, see, that horizontal, horizontal orientation is important. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. I don't really like to overdo it with that step because, again, I want my lake to feel super calm. Okay. That looks good to me. All right, painters, just a few more steps. So now we've completed uh, the pretty much the whole mid section of this painting, the middle ground. So we have our background, our middle ground. Now we're going to do a little bit of action in our foreground. So let's create some nice, big, happy trees in an ode to Bob Ross. And this is that beautiful olive green color that I was talking about earlier. So you're actually going to use yellow and mix it with just a tiny bit of black. You're going to get this gorgeous Gorgeous olive green. I'm gonna mix, I think, just a pinch of the phalo in there. There. Like an army green. Deep forest green. Okay, I'm gonna do two trees. So this first one I wanna come into probably like the blue area. And this one's going to be pretty much all the way at the edge of your canvas. You're going to do these little just flicks of the wrist again. Everything is always very light handed. Just the end of your brush. Pushing a little bit harder as you come down, coming further out. So they're going to come either side like that, but then also you'll be looking at some. So you're going to have some brush strokes that kind of come straight down the center line there of the tree. You want to come pretty far down. Again, making it wider as you come down. until about there and then we're going to put some shrubbery in just a minute and then we'll do another little happy tree right next door because everyone needs a friend <laughs> you could even do three trees if you wanted Okay, very pretty green 
flicking out in either direction and then coming down the center line. Okay, now let's grab a little bit of white. We're just gonna use the tip of our brush to create some highlights, some moonshine. Beautiful. And that's just gonna highlight all the different directions that the tree would create there. Some nice definition, really making that tree pop. You can also use your baby brush for this step if you'd like. Smallest brush will give you a little bit more control. And you want it to sort of blend a little bit. But if you went too heavy handed, again, you can always grab some of the dark green and tone it down. Okay, very nice. I'm going to grab a darker green. So this is going to be almost black. And just a little bit of shadow in here too. A little bit of dark, dark green. All throughout here and there, just a little bit. Okay, that looks great. Now let's create some shrubbery, some hedges. Shrubbery. Okay, let's use our phthalo green. And just a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. So this is gonna be a different tone green than you did with your tree. So that's important. So you see that's a different tone. The green that we used in our trees had a yellow tone. And this green has a blue tone. But you can take a teeny bit of yellow and it kind of brings them closer together as colors. Okay. We're going to tap, tap, tap our way across about halfway of the canvas. And we're just going to tap, tap, tap. and fill that all in. Having a little bit of black that you can see underneath is totally fine. Kind of like the mountains, I'm gonna have a kind of multiple little peaks Okay, and then just grabbing a little bit of white there as well. And we're gonna go along the top part of that green and also sort of along the curves of the peaks in the shape. It's creating that roundness. little bit of white and it's going to kind of blend to that beautiful minty green but you also want a little bit of it to be pretty white reflection of that moonlight Okay. 
Okay. And now let's grab a little bit of dark green. And we're just gonna tap a little bit in here on the bottom for some more texture. Just a little bit. Okay. Home stretch. All right, that looks really good to me. Totally feeling it. Okay, last little baby step here is to add a little star if you'd like. I think maybe this is Venus. And I want to know what you guys thought of today's painting in the comments section. I'd love to see your art in the art club. Again, if you feel like you need a little bit more support, check out Patreon. And hopefully the acrylic boot camp is going to be a lot of value for you guys. So I'm excited to release that this month. Final little finishing touch on this painting is going to be done with my small brush. Actually, let's use the back of the brush first and we'll create our little star. Boop. Super cute. And you can actually do a couple more too if you want some bigger stars. A little bit more defined. And then on this one, you can just do a little flick of the wrist up. And then a little X right on top creates a really cute little star, which I think is just a really nice touch uh, to our gorgeous mountain lake painting. I think it turned out great. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys thought. I'd love to see your paintings. And I love you guys all. I hope this brought you some peace and some clarity. And I support all the efforts in this amazing movement that's happening in this country right now. And I love you guys. And I'll see you all next week. And until then, stay creative.